Good Monday morning. I'm Otis Corbett. I'm coming to you on Facebook this morning so that we can all start off this week the right way with scripture and prayer. Our scriptures for today come from the book of Nehemiah. We'll begin by reading Nehemiah 1 verses 1 through 4. Now it happened in the month of Chislev in the 20th year as I was in Susa the citadel that Hanani, one of the, my brothers, came with certain men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Now let's continue by looking at Nehemiah 2, verses 1 through 5. In the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad in his presence, and the king said to me, Why is your face sad? seeing you are not sick. This is nothing but sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my face be sad when the city, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king said to me, What are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves, that I might rebuild it. We're continuing in a short series of devotionals, which are highlighting the interdependence of God's people. And today we come to consider the actions taken by Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. These walls had been destroyed when Judah had been taken into the Babylonian captivity, but Nehemiah leveraged his relationship with King Artaxerxes to be allowed to rebuild these vital defensive walls. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he went out on a scouting mission and reconnoitered the entire perimeter of the city. Then he reported his findings to the leaders of the city in Nehemiah 2, verses 17 and 18. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer derision. And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good, and also of the words of the king that had been spoken to me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. Note what the people said. Let us rise up and build. Both they and Nehemiah knew that it would take all of them, working together, to rebuild the walls. And that is just what they did. They divided the work and they shared the load. God's people working together to accomplish the task. When you have a moment, review Nehemiah chapter 3 because it illustrates exactly what I'm talking about. Every verse tells how different families or other institutional groups like the priests in Jerusalem join together cooperatively to repair the walls. Every family or every group had their own section of wall. Every one of them had to do their wall so that the whole wall could be repaired. They repaired the walls and they repaired the gates so that their city would be safe and so that their God would not be a subject of derision. Their work progressed smoothly. In fact, so smoothly and quickly, because of their mutual assistance to each other, their mutual cooperation, that their work went so well that the pagan neighbors became frightened and jealous. And so they threatened the Jews in Jerusalem. And Nehemiah's response was to lead the Jews to cooperate in a different way. We see this in Nehemiah 4, verses 16 through 20. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction and half held spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. 
And the leader stood behind the whole house of Judah who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand and held his weapon with the other. And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side while he built. The man who sat under the trumpet was beside me. And I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, The work is great and widely spread, and we are separated on the wall, far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So the people cooperated for work and they cooperated for security. And the result was a rapid and very successful completion of the project. And we'll see that as we read Nehemiah 6, verses 15 and 16. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month of Elul in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem. For they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. No doubt about it, God did help them complete this task. To do the work in 52 days is amazing. Very few, very few construction projects come in under time and under budget, and many of them take much longer than expected. But this one was finished in 52 days. And yes, God does deserve the honor and the glory. And his people gave him that honor and glory because they worked together with him and with each other to get the job done. Today, the church faces huge problems. Huge problems spiritually, economically, socially, culturally. Many, many different kinds of problems. We face uh, spiritual warfare. Many other things that are as big or even bigger than that faced by Nehemiah and the remnant left in Jerusalem. Our challenges today are vast, but the solution to them is the same. We must work together with our Lord and our God and with each other to get the job done, to build God's kingdom, to pursue the Great Commission, to make disciples of all nations, to honor Him in everything we do, to build our churches, to protect our families. But we need to do it working together with each other and with our Lord. Now let's turn to a time of prayer. And we're going to begin with a few prayer requests from my local ministry, as we always do. We're going to begin with praying for a church. We pray for a different church each week. And this week we're praying for First Baptist Church Sanford. We're also praying for our churches without pastors. In recent days, several of our churches have uh, lost their pastors to retirement or, or to uh, them moving to another ministry location. But regardless, the list of our churches without pastors has gotten longer. Our list of potential pastors is not. So pray for our churches to find pastors. Pray for them also to Begun seek, to begin seeking God's wisdom for how to deal with this problem, how our churches can cooperate together like the children of Israel did to build the walls of Jerusalem. We can cooperate together now to help each other with pastor. And, uh, and, and the sheep need a shepherd, and maybe it's time to do some different things to make that happen. Pray about that. Pray for our collegiate ministry. It's led by Jerry Tyson, and he and his colleagues have um, been having a powerful and positive impact on the lives of our local college students. Jerry has recruited a number of other folks to help him with that ministry. Pray for God to work powerfully with those college students, and may they become salt and light on that campus. Pray for our Christian service centers and the compassion ministry that they provide. Pray for our counselors and pray for the transitions we're seeing in our leadership in the Covenant and Baptist Association. Pray for our annual meeting coming up on October the 19th at Babby Baptist Church. And pray for God to guide us as we look to the future for our future cooperative ministry together. Our association of churches, like the children of Israel, need to cooperate together to build God's kingdom here in our county. 
Pray for us as we learn how to do that. On a broader scale, we want to pray for peace in Ukraine. We want to pray for uh, peace in our own nation in terms of our political peace. It has been a tumultuous five years or more, and we definitely need the Lord to bring us a sense of peace and uh, a sense of working together politically and culturally in our nation. Pray that God will preserve our nation until a revival can break out in it and pray that that revival would start with us. Um, thank God for our quiet hurricane season. We here on the Gulf Coast are, are very concerned about hurricanes, but so far this year has been very quiet. Pray that that will continue. And as the season winds down and we start looking toward uh, other seasons of the year, uh, thank God for the quiet and peaceful time we've had and ask him to give us a quiet and peaceful fall tornado season as well. Pray for our farmers because it's time to get some more rain. Pray for the rain to come and to uh, break this drought that we're having uh, and this spell of dry weather. Uh, so that the farmers can have the rain and the animals can have the rain that they need. Pray for those who've been affected by these difficult economic times and may the folks who guide our economy become wiser and wiser and guide it better and better. Now, may God give you a good week and may you feel his blessings every day. Let's pray. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. I hope you have a great Monday morning and a wonderful week to come. I hope to see you again here next week.